Welcome back to Silver Flyer Channel, and as promised, the fake 2019 Silver Panda. I'm going to go over some stuff today to help you identify these if you do happen to come across them. I'm hoping they're not too common. Uh, this one particularly was bought in China and advertised as a fake panda. The pricing was also matching a fake. It was probably around three to four dollars US and uh, they made no secret uh, of the fact. However, if somebody wanted to buy these and ship them over into the US, for example, they might, uh, you might find these on the market. So some stuff to look out for. Number one, as most of them in China, they come in this box. Uh, gold, gold ones come in a similar box with gold lettering, a little bit smaller, but it's exactly the same box. And it also comes with the official certificate, which, you know, the box and the certificates can be bought online. So they don't really mean anything to you if you do see those. The first and most obvious, this being a real one here, uh, is the packaging. This, uh, this packaging, the fake, the fake one, being a little bit more rubbery and it is not vacuum sealed. Whereas these, and I bought quite a few of these over in China and they come this way. I know they don't probably, you probably don't see this packaging in North America very much, but this is how they come in a vacuum sealed flex seal. So that's the first thing. This one feels a little bit more plasticky and this is a little bit more rubber, rubber like. So that would be the first thing to look out for. And, uh, you know, you could also look at, you know, the pricing too. If something sounds too good to be true, maybe it is too good to be true. And just on first and initial glance, you'll notice the fake looks a little bit more shiny. And I don't know if that's the silver cladding process or not, or maybe it's a different metal. We're going to try to find out later. And uh, there's the real one. You see, it just seems a little more dull. Maybe that's the packaging. And we're going to get these out and look at them together. So with Chinese packaging, first off, it's always easy access. So we've got a little rip tab here. It's going to be easy to do without any tools or anything. You can just open up the package and take out your coin. All the thing on the Chinese coins too is these really nice little capsules with a little thumb hole here to help you pry it open. It is um, airtight and uh, fits really tight on snug on there, but you can do it without any real major effort. And there's your coin right there. That's the real one. The fake one is like I said, it's rubbery. I mean, you can tear the tab off here, but uh, you're probably gonna need a tool. So that's the first uncommon thing. And uh, it's more difficult to get out. So that was probably one of the first tells is that, there we go, it's kind of sticky, all right. And the other thing is, is the capsule itself, well, it's about the same. It's got the little thumb hole in here. I'm gonna pop this open. It feels pretty tight initially. Yeah, but it doesn't feel like it's uh, airtight, actually. When, once I got it moving, it just popped right off, whereas the other one had some resistance, probably because it's holding air. So there's your fake. Take a quick look at them here and see if they look much different. You got the real one and the fake one. Somebody went through a lot of effort to make these look very, very similar but there are some small, almost microscopic differences. So again, some of the finer details that you can see and probably best to do this if you had two coins to compare, but just on first visual inspection, you can already see if you look carefully some differences, which I'm gonna point out here what I see. Maybe you can point out some other ones that I'm not seeing. But the first most obvious is font. Look at the 10 on the fake coin over here and look at the 10 on the real coin. If you can see, it seems a little bit thicker. The lines that make the one and the zero look a little bit thicker. The other one is the font of the 30 grams, which I might've mentioned earlier. Go over that see if we can get this on here. 
right? So there's your 30 grams, which you can see it doesn't look really proud. And I'm not sure if you can see this in the camera, but the top edging of the numbers actually look like they're dimpled slightly and not so proud. They're not very sharp numbers and letters. Whereas on the real one, you can see right away the difference, how proud those are and how clean the tops of the ridges are that make the numbers or letters. Very, very clear. And there's like a very obvious one I could see through the plastic earlier, but I think you can see a lot more obvious here. Then look at smaller details. If you look at the real coin, I'll see if I can get this in here for you, but look at the fur on the arm here. And I think it's all the, the dark, the darker coloring fur, the unfrosted area. But look at the ridging there in the fur. And that's the real one. Look at the fake one. And it's not so clear. It's a little bit duller lines. I think you can see there. There you go. But the lines in that fur is a little bit duller than the real one. How clear those are. And even just with a naked eye, you can look at, look around the eyes here. Look at the frosting. It looks smoother here. It looks more frosted on the real one. And actually the color of the coin background, both look the same up there behind, uh, behind the heads of the pandas and them over the top of the mountains there below the numbers. There's that um, mirrored area. And it does look the same tone and same color that doesn't look any different. But all in all, they did a really good copy, but if you look at the fine detail, they didn't get the details of example, like the fur or around the eyes. There's actually a little bit of fur that would be the black fur around the eyes of the panda, which has a lot of detail in the real coin and not very much, very dull detail in the fake. Let's see if I can get this in here for you. But there's the fake. Looks kind of dull there. Now let's get the real one. And you can actually see fur, the lines that make the fur that goes around, the darker fur that goes around the panda's eyes. Those are some pretty, I don't know, to me they're obvious, but probably more obvious if you have both the fake and the real one sitting beside each other. If or if you haven't seen a panda before, they're gonna be hard to pick up. But look for detail. If you see dull details, start questioning it. If you see sharp details, you're probably on the right track to having a good coin. Okay, so if you don't have two to compare, a real, a real one and a fake one, you have the basics. We know what a panda is supposed to weigh and um, what it should measure. So I'm gonna go over those quickly with you. We'll cover the weights first. Now I'm ready for your comments. I know what you guys are gonna say. He's got no gloves on. He's touching the real silver. Yes, I'm going to do it. Only on the edges. So 30, exactly. And I've had pandas at 30.04, 30.05, 30.01. 30 this one, I'm mean, a surprise. It is bang on to the hundredth, um, which is good. I mean, but they should be really close. There shouldn't be a tenth difference anyways. You shouldn't see that. So there's your real one and your fake one. 29.8 and that's two full points shy. And let it again, 29.8. And the other one, I had a second one earlier, it was something like 30.8 or whatever. So right off on weights, you're off. And like I said, if you're a couple of one hundredths off, I wouldn't be alarmed. If you're tenths off, I'd start paying attention to what you have here. Next, we'll go over measurement. So again, talking about visual reference, you can go onto many websites and find good, clear photographs this being one of the dealers that does sell pandas. And you can look at for some of the details I was talking about there. Here's your fake against what the real one should look like. And then your real one here. 
Um, more importantly, a lot of them will have um, specifications. So here you have your diameter at 40 and your thickness at 2.85 for a real coin. So start off the real one. I like to use these because they are uh, plastic and it won't scratch your coin, although they're not the most accurate. The dial I don't pay too much attention to, but the pointer is pretty good. So diameter, bang on 40 and as expected. Now in order for the fake one to have the correct, you know, picture, picture frame if you want to, if you will, uh, circular picture frame, in order for it to look right, it's going to have to be the same diameter. So this won't surprise me. You know, I can just feel around the edges and they're going to be identical. It's not going to surprise me if this turns out to be exactly 40 as well. And there you go, 40 exactly. That doesn't surprise me. But this metal, if it's not silver, isn't as dense as actual silver. Normally there aren't many metals other, you know, that'll mimic silver or gold. So your obvious tell is, the most obvious tell is gonna be thickness. Your real one, your fake one. And look at that. It looks like it's probably almost twice as thick as the real one. Um, so we'll go quickly measure them and just, We'll see, there's gonna be no surprises here, but your real one, and again, at the pointer, I'm looking at, uh, yep, over two and a half, so you're pretty close to what it should be at 2.85, and your fake. Out there so you can see it. Uh, yeah, so it's over four, and probably getting closer to five, so you're looking at about four and a half, to five millimeters for the fake as expected. Another good tell on this one here, and I don't know if you can see so well on the camera, but the ridging that goes on here, I'm not sure if it's called ridging or knurling. Uh, it doesn't look like knurling. I think that's crossed both ways. But uh, the ridging along here, along the real one, if you look, is absolutely perfect. Each line is perfect. There's no real discernible imperfections. But if you look at your fake one, and hopefully you can see this, and if you look slowly here, I do see lots of little tiny microscopic imperfections. You know, so it looks like sort of a dent on there too. So the workmanship isn't quite what the real one would be. There's a good tell for you as well. So to recap quickly, and uh, I think it's important, just to go over this is uh, some of these might make it out to the market and you might encounter these. So you want to look for the obvious stuff. I mean, if it comes in a box and it has a certificate, this means nothing to you. So let's ignore that. Now, if it has packaging, if it has plastic packaging, it should be somewhat similar to this. Most of them are, there's small differences in this type of packaging, but it feels pretty plasticky. It is vacuum sealed and you'll have some Chinese characters on it and it'll have an easy rip open. If you have a capsule and you're taking the capsule off, it's number one, it's going to be very well sealed, okay? It's gonna have, you know, you can have the typical little thumb hole in here, but it's gonna be very well sealed and um, tightly fitting. Whereas I found the fake one, um, it looks like cheaper plastic to be honest, but uh, it didn't really, once I got it broken, like the, the edge broken off, it just slipped open and it's, it's not really airtight. Most importantly, the coin itself, if you get a good chance to look at it, I'm gonna say the easiest one, as we mentioned earlier, it's just the thickness. If it's really thick, now most coins, even eagles, maples, whatever, gonna be around three millimeters. They might have a little difference in the diameter, a little difference in the thickness, but they're not gonna be really thick. So, um, and they're gonna be, I mean, such a small amount that by eye without measuring, you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. Uh, some other stuff you would want to look at, if you get a chance to really look at the coin quickly or closely, is to have a good look at the detail. Now, this one here, the font up here, not real proud. The font in the numbering of the 10 RMB, a um, little bit narrower, but I don't know if you don't have one to compare, that's not going to be obvious. But I do think having you know these numbers up here, in the 30, 30 gram AG, 
triple nine. Uh, if they're not really proud like this one, then I'm thinking you might want to be looking at that coin a little more closely. And again, I think a really good tell is the fur along here and the fur on the baby's arm and whatnot. These are really not, not very pronounced on the fake. Whereas on the real one, it's really nice detail in there and around the eyes as well. The frosting is a little more, I don't want to say not quite as frosted. Whereas here you have a little bit more shine in the, in the panda's face where it would be white on the actual animal. Um, here it's, it's not, here you've got real frosting. I mean, it's, it absorbs all the light, it breaks up all the light, whereas here you get some reflection. So those are some pretty good tells as well. And then, uh, you know, if you can measure, of course, and uh, scales are also a good thing to have. Now, get it, you have to get it out of the packaging, out of the capsule as well to properly measure it because you're looking at uh, tenths and one hundredths of a gram and it would be important to have these are good pocket scales to carry around They're not real expensive. I'd recommend having some of these if you're if you're not sure Thanks for joining me on silver flyer channel I'm hoping you don't run into any of these obviously somebody went through a lot of effort to get this really close to the real thing and this being the fake here again um, I can't see why anybody would go through so much effort to sell them for four bucks I'm thinking there's probably somebody out there intending to get these onto the market. So be careful out there and uh, shop with uh, reputable dealers. Thanks for joining me and take care. Don't miss my next video. I'm really excited for this one. I've been waiting 1,230 plus ounces of silver, three ounces of gold, and some of my local pickups. Looking forward to seeing you on the channel again for that one. Have a great day.